What's going on guys? Thanks for tuning in into another video. If you see, I've got this jacket on, even though I live in Florida and it's like a thousand degrees outside, but it is my fire jacket that I just received. It came in the mail today. Big thank you to Justin Riley is his last name for uh, hooking me up with this jacket for next to nothing basically. So I really appreciate you on that. Uh, let's dive into what we're doing today. So if you saw my video that I uploaded last, we went over the new build that we're gonna be doing. Just like Yoast has his DA with a B20, we're gonna be building an all-motor B20 as well. That's the header that we have for it right now. In the last video, I also picked up the compressor and I just got that all uh, hooked up right here. A little die grinder so I can start porting the head that I'll be getting soon. And over here, I have an old long block, an LS, that I'm just gonna be using for mocking right now. It's not the actual block or head that I'll be using, but it's just one that I have laying around. And one thing that we had in mind was either get an aftermarket intake manifold or modify the stock intake manifold. But for those of you who are familiar with non-VTEC B-series, uh, B20 manifolds that come from Japan are normally really tall. So it has really small, long runners. Um, most of those, they don't fit in a regular uh, like Civic or an Integra when you swap them in. So they do an LS manifold, which just comes on the non-VTEC uh, Integras. So we could do that. I have an, a non-VTEC LS manifold, but the runners, similar to the CRV manifold, are very thin, and it's a very long runner. And for what we wanna do, like an all-motor, higher compression, uh, nitrous build, it's not really in our best interest. So right over here, I've got an old-style B16 manifold. So being that the runners are more direct and don't have much curve, and they're a little bit thicker than the LS ones, as well as the plenum being a little bit larger, it'll help it uh, perform a little bit better. And like I said, although this isn't the B20 head, LS and B20 have both the same non-VTEC pattern for the bolts. So there's basically three styles of intake manifolds for B-Series. You've got the GSR, which is the VTEC Integra motor. Then there's a B16 slash Type R, which is this bolt style right here. And then there's the non-VTEC uh, B20 or LS manifold. A lot of people don't know this, but some of the bolts on the B16 manifold and the non-VTEC heads line up. I'm trying to line it up. Uh, if you see right here, we've got this one lines up, this one lines up, then the corner one lines up as well. And the bottom ones do also. Now, the big thing about this is that the LS has a lower bolt right here that would basically hit against the manifold itself right in the center of those two runners. So that wouldn't allow it to clear a B16. That's one of the things. Uh, I think all the, the bottom bolts are able to go through the, the design. Another thing is this coolant passage right there is not the same location as a B16. So what some people do and it's not very common, but there is a way to do it. You basically cut the manifold right here and get rid of this coolant uh, plug or nipple, whatever you want to call it, and put in a fitting right here and just have it individually off of the manifold. That way you run the manifold. And uh, some people normally just delete this right here, get rid of it completely and don't run a bolt. Although I'm going to see if I can modify this backspacing and cut out a hole right there and then just run the stud through the center. If it works, perfect. If it doesn't, other people run it without. Um, this bolt hole, the top center one, where the B16 will normally have a bolt right here. If I'm not mistaken, what I read online is that this, since it's obviously, it has a lip on it, it has a little step outwards. People drill this out, that way it accepts the step and it just sits like as a placement guide in there. Or you could just, make a hole right there altogether. We're gonna do a little R&D right there, so we're not gonna worry or explain too much on it right now. But I think to start off, we're going, going to start by cutting this right here and getting rid of this lip. Um, although it, it does have a mount for the fuel rail right there. I'm trying to think of how we can do this without having to sacrifice that. I'm actually gonna measure right here on the flange and see exactly where the bolt would come out on the other side and see if we can play with it a little bit. Because not many people do the B16 manifolds on the non-VTEC heads, but it has been done multiple times. So I kind of want to show you guys something that you can do with laying parts that are laying around, because this is like a $35 manifold you can buy one used, instead of buying like a two or $300 manifold that's made by Skunk2 or Blocks. They have a couple aftermarket ones out on the market. And if we can save a few bucks, that would be perfect for you guys and perfect for my budget on this too. 
main reason that I'm trying to stay on a major budget on this is not only because it's better to be cost efficient, but also I, if you aren't familiar with the channel, I do have another car, an Acura Integra, which is a stock sleeve setup, but fully built on, besides that. And uh, that's like the full track car. And this is just trying to be like a little side build, little budget street car with nitrous. So we're gonna try to do what we can the most efficient way possible and the most cheap in cost wise, not cheap as in uh, making things ghetto. But we wanna see if we can make this work because it is a better manifold design than the stock LS one. And one thing that I also wanna do right here is with my angle grinder, grab like a cutting disc and I'm not sure exactly where I would cut it yet. Probably right down over here. And I wanna take the plenum off. That way I'm able to port not only the bottom of the runners, but the top of the runners and port the plenum as well. Because if you look in here, there's a whole bunch of casting imperfections. And we will open it up a little bit to match the gasket of the intake side. And then from that point also port the cylinder head of the car or the head that we're gonna be using, not this one, but right now we just wanna make sure that we can get the B16 manifold to actually fit onto a non VTEC head. While I have them out, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the B16 manifold and the LS. As you can see, the runners have that big curve right there, and this is more straightforward. So instead of making like a little flange or something, I just use a piece of cardboard so it can put the holes where it needs to be. And now I'm gonna mate this up against the B16 manifold. Since the bottom two holes are gonna fit perfectly and this should be in the area where there's not a hole. Those two on the bottom and I'll do it precise, more precise once I set this down and have two hands. But right here, that's bolted right there, that's right there. And the hole that we need is gonna sit right under this right here. So like right in the center of that. All right, I've got those two guide bolts right there and that's the center area. And I'll just make a little hole. Or... Basically like a little pilot so it can be marked where I need to drill. And that looks pretty centered from the hole above. So that will be where I will drill my hole right now. All right, so if I could choose what tool to use, I'd use that little air saw that's like this big and it cuts back and forth so I could make this as clean as I want but I don't have that right now and instead of going to the store I am using a step bit to make a hole right there that way we would be able to fit uh, the necessary hardware behind or under this uh, fuel rail mount because I could have done away with this whole fuel rail mount right here and just run off this stock two ones but although it would have worked because I've seen it on a lot of cars, I want to see if I can get away with doing it this way. That way it's a little bit safer and, and you know, I don't have to worry about other things. So this hole right here is a little bit bigger and it doesn't matter if it's a bit bigger as long as the, the flange of the bolt will be able to hold it on because it's not like any uh, air or liquid is going through here. It's just holding the actual flange onto the manifold. So if you look from the bottom, I've got the step bit drilled out that area so I could fit a bolt. Let me zoom in. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come in with a little uh, sanding wheel that I bought for porting, and I'm gonna try to make this as flush as possible so the bolt has a good area to sit on. Um, right now, since I do have the step bit out, I'm gonna go ahead and step bit, or drill this a little bit bigger so it has the ability for that plug to just fit right into it. And I just test fitted it very loosely, although this is the rough cut. Um, it's starting to sit more flush to the engine itself because this bolt or the stud is actually going into the hole. I have to wiggle it a little bit and um, make this hole a little bit bigger since the bit that I had that needs to drill that size is actually broken. So I'm gonna have to get a different one. And I could use the step bit, but I don't wanna make it all the way big since it's a thick flange. By the time it gets to where it needs to be, it'll probably be on this uh, setting right there. It's a little bit bigger than I want to. But uh, essentially we have the flange fitting onto the head, pretty much all done up. As you can see, we've got this one lines up, this lines up, this is gonna line up, that one as well. The top right one does not, but all the bottom ones do. So it has about like 80% of the clamping force that it needs to have. And what I was mentioning earlier, the coolant jacket 
it, or the coolant nipple is not gonna line up with this to that because if you look at the LS or B21, it sits a lot lower. And on the B16 one, it's almost towards the middle of the flange. And you can see on this one, it's towards the bottom left. So kind of thinking, I'm not 100% I'm sure, sure I'm gonna do this, but one of the methods that I thought of would be even cut off of this manifold and try to be precise and cut off the same type of part and then weld it onto here and then uh, like sand it flat so it would still be a good flange. Don't quote me on it. I'm not 100% sure if I'm gonna do that yet. Another thing to keep in mind right here, this port, if I'm not mistaken, it's part of the EGR system. So exhaust, uh, exhaust air does come out of there. So that can just be plugged up with a little bolt or thread it in and do like a NPT style bolt. We're gonna worry about that later. But um, yeah, looks like it's coming together pretty good. All right, so the manifold is fully seated against the head. Right here, you can see the bolt or the stud actually protruding from the manifold flange. And obviously that's not gonna be nearly enough to put a nut on. So what I think I'll do is, like I said, either start cutting back here and make a little more area on the flange for a nut to go on, or we could also do just a bolt and uh, removing a stud off of the manifold and replacing it with a bolt like it does for the corners. And that shouldn't be an issue at all. But everything else seems to be lining up perfectly. The bottom, you can see the left bottom is where a bolt goes, same for the left top. The bottom all has the studs in place where they need to be. Stud in place, perfect right here. Stud in place, perfect right there. Uh, this isn't gonna have a bolt, like we said, that needs to be cut off. And, uh, but it's looking pretty good. Let's see what it looks like from the top. Definitely a different view on a non tech head. It's basically what the Skunk 2 one is, but off of an OEM manifold. So I've got this tool. Let's start right here on the bottom of the manifold. All right, well, basically I cleaned up the bore for the uh, stud that comes off of the manifold. So this is gonna slide in and out perfectly now. It's not gonna have to worry about bumping on the way in. Although being that only it's a sanding disc and not an actual porting disc or bit, it's not gonna clean up exactly how I want it over here. So I basically have to wait until I get the right burrs. I ordered the carbide, carbide burr, I think is what it's called. The actual tool that's used for porting cylinder heads. Um, I ordered like 10 bits of that online, so they should come in in a couple days and I'll be able to clean that up and then make this flat right here and get it the, the right depth to be able to uh, fit in the necessary hardware. Um, I'm still struggling with the idea of either if I wanna cut the flange and make a custom adapter to make them both work together or if I wanna do it the other way. So I'm not 100% sure. So all night I've been messing with, not all night, but for like the past hour I've been messing with different ways to maybe like cut off the flange off of one and put it on the other and kind of Frankenstein the flange of the intake manifold. I'm overcomplicating the, the situation. So I went back, back to bare minimum. I cut off one of these nipples from a spare motor thermostat housing that I have. Then I figured that if I cut the manifold, the B16 manifold, at this angle right here, just enough to still have sealing around this runner, weld on a tab to run onto this bolt, and then use this nipple that I cut off. This fits perfectly right here. A little tight, but it's like a perfect press, press fit. And there's that lip around it. So once this is all cleaned up, this can be welded on directly to the cylinder head, and it should be able to run the, uh, like, the coolant out of here independent of what manifold you use as long as you have the ear cut off right there so we simplified that solution we already made the hole in the b60 manifold for that we did a step bit for this one right here we know that it fits flush now the next thing would be to pick up the p8r head tomorrow morning and uh, take it to my fabricator we're going to be doing some stuff with the weight plate and have him tack this up and weld it while we're there and make sure that everything fits all nice and good. All right, so I cut off the ear on the bottom of this intake or on the side of this intake. So as you can see, we still have good clearance on the side for there to be a gasket and not leak. Um, I was gonna keep a little bit of this area, this area right here, so I could drill out a hole and make a new mount for this bolt right there. Unfortunately, to access the part that we didn't need to, need to cut, we had to make a couple cuts and we weren't able to keep that, but that's fine. I'll have something welded onto there. 
Uh, like I said, this is just a placement right there. It's not welded on. Obviously, this isn't the head that we're using, but just to show you, if I can do this with one hand, the manifold sits perfectly on there. Still has plenty of clearance from the coolant nipple to the manifold itself. Just needs a little tab right there for that gasket to have an EGR delete. And that should be good. That's basically it for the B16 manifold. Fits perfectly onto the LS B20 engine um, with obviously a lot of modification, but nothing crazy. And if you're on a budget, this is a perfect for you. So instead of welding it on, we're just gonna tap it and do like a pipe thread fitting off of it. All right, here we have that plug. It's already threaded in place. I'm gonna take it off real quick so you can see. This is a half inch thread that we made the threads into the cylinder head. There's that right there, if I can focus on. We still have metal shavings everywhere because obviously we're gonna be porting the head and the manifold, so we're not worried about that right now. But you're gonna be using some thread tape or liquid thread tape, whatever you have available to yourself. Um, and this is just gonna thread directly into the head. And uh, it's a little hard to do with the manifold still on it because this flange right here actually hits the manifold until it's threaded into position. So this, we're just gonna make sure that we get it exactly where we want it. And then we go ahead and place the manifold over it. And that sits perfectly. We've got all of the bolts where it needs to be. Uh, we could do another little flange bolt right here, weld on a tab, but it's not crazy necessary right now because the top ones will secure it. Since it's not boosted or anything, it won't have a crazy amount of pressure, but it wouldn't hurt to have that extra tab. Then for this right here, we're gonna be able to tap that as well as we tap the head over here. That way we can just block off the EGR. If not, you're gonna have a big exhaust leak. And I mean, I don't think, and you don't really wanna have all that extra noise. But that pretty much sums up the conversion for the B16 manifold. We are gonna be cutting the plenum in the next day or two and then porting the runners uh, opening up the throttle body and being able to port match the head as well so we've got a lot of content on that coming in the next uh, couple days next couple weeks so make sure to stay tuned for that if you aren't already subscribed make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as well as leave me down a comment in the comment section below because i would love to hear your input with all of this and and that pretty much sums up the video thanks guys hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and peace.